Friends, hey, it's Trevor here. How are you guys doing? We got such a big week this week. This is the week of Thanksgiving. And I don't know about you, but I am so fired up. I mean, I have been looking at recipes for pie and cakes and turkey. And I, I don't even, I'm not even making any of these. I just am starting to think about all the food that I want to eat on Thanksgiving. And I'm so excited. And if you remember, right, this whole week, we're talking, this whole month, we're talking about being thankful. We're talking about this word gratitude, right? And being grateful for what we have. And there's this story in the Bible I want to tell all of you guys that is so valuable when we, talk, when we talk about what it means to be grateful. In Matthew chapter 20, we're not going to read the whole story, but I, I want you, I, when you're at home this week, this is such a good week to read this story because of the theme behind it. So it's Matthew chapter 20, 1 verse 16. And, uh, and go, yeah, and read with your parents, read at home. This, this wild story that Jesus tells, he's talking about what the kingdom of heaven is like, right? What is it like when, when God's in charge is, is what's going on. And he tells this story about this guy who works at a vineyard, or he owns the vineyard. And you can imagine that he's got this big farm, and he's got all of these grapes that, that all need to be picked, and he doesn't have any help. And so when you don't have any help, you, you go find help. And so he goes to this marketplace, this big courtyard area, and all these people are stirring about. There's a lot of people out there that need work, and, and some people are there first thing in the morning. And the owner comes first thing in the morning, and he says, hey, if you come work for me, I will pay you what he calls as a denarius, which is a lot of money for, that, for a one day's work. It was a good amount of money. And so they're like, yes, we'd love to come work for you. They load up, and they, they go farm and you can imagine they're just sitting there and they got their bucket and they're just picking grapes picking grapes but the the, the field is too big they can't possibly get all this job done he needs more work he needs more helpers so he goes back to this marketplace area and he finds more people standing out there later in the day and they also need to work they're looking for work he says here come here and come with me and i'll pay you whatever is right and they're like great we, we need a job we'd love that and so they get their buckets, they go out in the field, and they're picking the grapes, and he does it again and again all throughout the day. And then at the very end of the day, near closing time in which everybody's going to go home, he finds more workers and brings them. And can you imagine if you're one of the early workers, and you're sitting there, and you've spent the entire day working? Have you ever worked in your, ba in, your, in your backyard or ever helped your parents with a project the entire day long? It's exhausting, right? At the end of the day, you're just like, oh, I am tired. I want to eat dinner and go to bed. So you got these workers and they're tired. They just want to eat dinner and they want to go to bed and they see more workers coming and they, just th they must be thinking, if they're getting money, well, we're going to get so much more than them, right? And at the end of the day, Jesus goes to pay all of them, right? And he kept saying this all throughout the story, and you'll see it, whatever it is right, whatever is right, I will pay you. And he starts with those workers that showed up last, and then in a single final line, everybody goes all the way to who showed up first. So you can imagine, the people who have been there the entire day are watching the people in front of them get paid. And they're just like, oh, 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 this is it. This is our big payday. He got, how much did he get? How much did he get? And you can imagine people are celebrating as they got way more than they were thinking. So people are jumping out of line going, I can't believe it. We got so much. I'm going to, I'm going to help my kids get, get their shoes or whatever they need. And you got people over here jumping for joy. I can, I can finally pay off that debt or pay off whatever. I can finally get that it's wanting. And the people in the back must be like, oh, this is amazing. What are, what are, what are we going to be paid? Right? What is, what, what's the money we're going to get get for all of that work? We did so much work. My fingers are blue from all of those grapes. Purple? Purple. <laughs> and they get to the front of the line, and the owner of the vineyard hands them that Daenerys. Everybody else also got a Daenerys. You remember? 
that, that, that currency, that's what it was called back then, was, was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. So for everybody to get that amount was extreme. But all of a sudden, the people at the, from the, who worked at the very beginning, remember, that owner came to them very first thing in the morning and said, I will pay you this much if you come work for me. And they agreed to it. They said, yes. So all of a sudden, they're sitting there holding that very valuable coin that costs a lot, that, that is a lot of money in their hand. They're sitting there with a lot of money in their hand. And we're at the beginning of the day, they would have been grateful for it. Now they're really bitter about it. Right? I mean, can you imagine if you did some school project or, or you did some thing and you worked tirelessly at it and you were spent so much time on it and the person who showed up last or, or, turned, their, or turned their work in late or whatever got the same grade that you did or, or got the same reward that you did, you'd be upset even though your reward was great. What's the problem, Right? If I have a great reward, how all of a sudden am I sad about it? And Jesus, or the, the owner of the, the vineyard, is talking here, and he says this in Matthew chapter 20, verses 13 through 15. Friend, he said, I'm being fair to you. Didn't you agree to work for the usual day's pay? Take your money and go. I want to give, you, I want to give the one I hired last the same pay I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Oh. Right? He, he reveals their bitterness. And he explains, what, why would you be upset if I'm generous? I gave you something that you were excited to have. Why all of a sudden are you not happy with it? And the fact of the matter is for us, for all of us, as we, especially as we head into this holiday season, right, as we're looking towards Christmas. I don't know about you, but maybe some of you are out there, I want this, and I want that, and I want this, and that wish list gets a little long, right? And we, can, we have a tendency to, to let that happen. But the message here is so important for us. We are taught by Jesus here to be grateful for what we already have. That that maybe we've gotten used to that thing or that, that toy or that game. Maybe we've gotten used to something around the house. Maybe we've gotten used to things that are so basic and so good, like a refrigerator. Have you ever thought what life would be like without a refrigerator? It would be brutal. There would never be ice cream. It would be gone. There would be no ice cream. That's just a start. There's so many things in our house. Just look around your house. Go ahead, take a walk, and just look around and be like, what would life be like without that? What would life be like without that? If I didn't have that, what would things be like? So the reality is, is we've been given so many good things. And that leads us to our bottom line this week. It's simply put, adjust your attitude. Adjust your attitude. Sometimes the issue with our gratitude isn't the thing itself, but it's our perception of it. It's the way we look at it. It's like we got bitter glasses on or complaining sunglasses or whatever you want to call it. And everything around is, is, is all of a sudden not good or ugly or, or, you know, whatever. So I want to give all of you a challenge this week. And I'm going to challenge myself with this too. For the, from be this day to this day next week, do not complain once. Oh. <laughs> do not complain once. But in everything that you find in a situation to complain about, respond with one reason why you're grateful for it. Doesn't that sound so hard? I mean, the moment that broccoli finds its way on your plate and the moment it's handed to you for dinner and your immediate thought is, I hate these little trees. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be different if we were able to just say, I'm so glad I have food on my plate. So, this week, let's be grateful. 
Let's be so grateful for everything we have. Let's adjust our attitude and, and tell me how it goes. If you're able to make it the whole week without complaining once, oh, I would hard for us to do. It's so easy for us to do. And remember that memory verse, right? If you don't remember, here it is from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Work on that memory verse. It'll help us, remind us to enjoy the good and be grateful for the good rather than spending our time focusing on things to complain about. Friends, I hope that you have an amazing Thanksgiving. I know this Thanksgiving is going to look different than any Thanksgiving in the past. But you know what? We're gonna, still going to have Thanksgiving even if it looks a little different. Something to be grateful for right there to begin. I hope you guys have an awesome week, an amazing week, and I'll see you all next week.